Hi, Minister. Uh, this is for Minister Dick. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I'm just asking, I want to ask about Bill 36 because some uh, physicians have expressed concerns about uh, what they say is government overreach. So uh, they've expressed concerns about uh, government having more access to their medical records or more power to meet out uh, uh, more severe discipline against physicians. Uh, what do you say to these concerns? Uh, thanks very much for the, the question and the opportunity to to respond on this question. Um, and I'll, I'll give a slightly longer answer, but if you want more, Katie, I'm happy to give you a call later because uh, there'll be other questions as well, I know. Uh, Bill 36 um, is the first reform of the Health Professions Act in 30 years, considering um, the changes in healthcare in that time. It's a, it's a timely and important reform. It came out, out of uh, a very significant report done by uh, uh, an expert in the field, uh, Harry Caton, uh, that was done in response to concerns about um, certain health regulatory bodies, or one, uh, the, the dental profession, and how it was conducting certain aspects of its business, and a broader review of how we regulated uh, um, health professions. We followed that up with an all-party process. In other words, uh, the Liberal health critic at the time, the Green Party health critic, and I reviewed the Caton Report and developed a series of recommendations which became uh, Bill 36. We had an extensive public consultation, one of the most extensive on legislation the province has ever seen, thousands of participants, the majority of them health professionals, including, of course, many doctors, but many others as well. The legislation does important things. It uh, takes a proactive approach to eliminating discrimination in BC's health uh, uh, system. The In Plain Sight Report and the Reconciliation ha Act happened in the middle of our consultations around Bill 36. We improved governance. We've reduced the number of regulatory colleges so they all have the ability to, uh, I think, uh, do what they're required to do under the law e more easily. Uh, when I became Minister of Health, there was a regulatory uh, college that had to support um, all of the activities of regulation with 87 providers. And so we are Shifting that, it's our expectation there'll be six colleges at the end of this process. And more transparency and accountability, something the public had been asking for and many journalists uh, such as yourself had been asking for. In other words, not when there are complaints made, but when there are findings of misconduct, that those findings of misconduct be published. And that is a reasonable step that was massively supported in our consultation. So I want to speak to a couple of the issues you raised that are uh, issues of concern uh, that have been raised in the last couple of days. Um, first, uh, it talks about um, that there's been concern about patient clinical records, that uh, somehow this will give somebody in government a chance to seize or copy a patient's clinical records. This is not true. It is false. Bill 36 does not allow the government to copy or seize clinical records. Only an independent investigator appointed by the independent reg registrar at the request of the investigation committee can do so. When there's a complaint, for example, a complaint of abuse, you have to be able to review the evidence to, provide, to determine uh, the validity of that complaint. When a healthcare professional has a complaint against them and it has warranted an investigation, therefore it's a significant complaint, the inv investigator requires the ability to search records to act in the public interest but is also subject to restraints on how that information can be used. Let me be very clear. This is no different than the circumstance in the present act. No different. Um, there has been concerns about um, uh, what patient, physicians and other health professionals can say. Again, there are, with respect to putting forward false information, which sometimes happens, for example, false information about the effectiveness of certain, um, of certain uh, remedies, there, there is a requirement to be truthful and evidence-based now. That is a professional requirement that all, well, and in particular physicians, uh, support. And that will continue to be the case. This isn't about a critical, uh, this is about limiting critical or free speech. Uh, in fact, it's what uh, the legislation supports what we do now. You can't put out false information. And as a professional, and I don't think anybody really would be um, uh, concerned about that. Finally, I just say with respect to um, the way we appoint people to regulatory colleges. So we've had 
uh, 22 regulatory colleges when I became Minister of Health. We've reduced that number and amalgamated number. It's now 15. It will eventually uh, be six. Currently, at the discretion of the Minister of Health, um, the Minister of Health, in the case of myself, before it was uh, Terry Lake, um, would appoint uh, 50% of the board members. And the profession would elect at these 23 different colleges um, their board members from the profession. Now, the, these colleges do not represent the profession. They represent the public interest, so they regulate the profession. So the recommendation that was overwhelmingly supported in our consultation was to move to a merit-based system where you have the superintendent, who, uh, the superintendent making recommendations on people who are qualified to act on uh, health college boards. And that is the core of it. So it takes away discretion from the Minister of Health as it goes through that process and from the professions themselves who are being regulated by that process. This was overwhelmingly supported by all three political parties who took part, by uh, the vast majority, I think 92% of people who took part in our consultation. And that's what the act reflects. And I think that um, there can always be criticism and always better ways to do things. We started this process in 2018. It's a five-year process, the most significant consultation, uh, indigenous consultation reflecting um, the requirements of the Reconciliation Act and the In Plain Sight Report. It's a massive consultation of health professional organizations, including all of the ones involved, reflected in the 22 existing colleges. A significant uh, um, consultation of the public and a reflection of the views of many, including people in the media, about, so, about removing some of the opaque elements of the current act. I want to say to everybody, though, complaints don't get made public. It's only when determinations of misconduct are made that they should be made public, and they should be made public in every case. And that's, uh, and that's the determination that's made, but that's after a lengthy process uh, where all sides have the opportunity to state their views. So that's, uh, that's the bill. It's a significant bill. It's all laid out in the legislation. Much of what, a significant portion that was in regulation is now in legislation. And I think it's a good thing for people. Katie, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, please. When you talk about the, the the people appointed to the college, uh, the colleges, would they be people in the industry with knowledge of the of that particular profession, or would they be anyone? I, I, how do you select who's appointed? Uh, the expertise um, and is developed independently, so we appoint um, an oversight body to make sure because we had. Uh, 22 and out of six with um, health regulatory bo bodies with too much variety in standards and so on. So uh, this will be a merit-based process, expertise in, in regulation and understanding of uh, regulation, how to deal with complaint process, and to ensure that uh, justice is brought to those processes, not just uh, for health professionals, but health professionals and patients. So uh, that's the reason we're doing it that way. Right now, um, we, of course, attempt to do that in and I think do a relatively uh, a very good job in doing that. But the discretion, for example, in this process and, that, and the recommendations and the fact that those are recommendations will be public. Uh, and, and right now, half of the people are appointed directly uh, by me. And while I make, um, I think we've done a good job, and I think previous ministers have done a good job in appointing really good people to those boards. This professionalizes that process. This happens frequently with boards everywhere. And I think, uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, 